Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session OCaml platform in 2022. We are very glad to have Sudha join us uh, today. So without further delay, Sudha, over to you. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining my session on OCaml platform in 2022. Uh, just to give you an introduction of myself, uh, I am a software engineer at uh, Teradisk. I joined the OCaml team two years ago at IIT Madras, and uh, since then I've moved to Teradisk to the same job. Uh, so in this session today, I hope to give you all a quick tour of uh, various components of the OCaml platform, which will uh, hopefully enhance your uh, developer experience of uh, using OCaml. And uh, before I begin, I would like to thank all the people who have been involved in uh, such a remarkable work of making the o OCaml platform uh, in a way that's very pleasant to use. So thanks to all the OCaml platform developers and maintainers for uh, giving us this uh, nice features. Uh, so just to give a very uh, very quick introduction about OCaml to people who might not be familiar with OCaml at all. Uh, OCaml is a functional programming language in its core. Uh, it is uh, ML family language, uh, uh, which started with standard ML, and OCaml is a spin-off of it with interactive and object-oriented features, which has been quite useful for uh, a lot of work to be honest. But uh, in its core, it's uh, still a functional programming language with a lot of purely functional features, and uh, the, that are the most used features in OCaml. So it has a strong static typing. How is it useful? So uh, when we say strong static typing, it means uh, the compiler is available, sorry, the compiler is aware of the type. So what that means is uh, the compiler will not allow you to compile unless your typing information is right. And as it uh, as the saying goes in the EFT community, if your compile if your program compiles, it works. So OCaml uh, has strong types, and uh, it also doesn't mandate you to write the types yourself because it uses type inference to insert whatever type your uh, functions uh, have, which uh, gives you uh, very strong uh, typing features to make your uh, experience of writing OCaml programs easier. It uh, also has algebraic data types, which uh, makes representing any data structure very easy. Uh, you will see some examples uh, in the subsequent slides of uh, how uh, ADTs are represented in OCaml. It also has pattern matching, uh, which is quite similar to Haskell's pattern matching, except for the syntax. Uh, and uh, pattern matching uh, makes sure that your uh, code is exhaustive. It means that uh, you will, uh, there won't be any oversight in missing out some of the items in uh, what the function is going to cover. So ADTs and pattern matching are uh, one of the uh, very nice features of uh, OCaml uh, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, uh, contrary to popular perception that SP languages are not suited for uh, systems programming, OCaml has very nice uh, features to allow systems programming. It has very good Unix bindings, and it also helps that uh, OCaml, uh, OCaml has a DC, which is uh, badly tested and it is very performant. And at the same time, it supports uh, the CSSI. It has a very uh, strong CSSI, which makes writing key bindings very easy. So uh, OCaml has been uh, used for a lot of systems programming, which is again uh, contrary to the popular perception that uh, SP languages are not used for systems programming. And uh, like I mentioned just now, OCaml comes with the garbage collector. Uh, so OCaml uh, uses 
minor and the major collector the minor collector is quite fast so there aren't much uh, dc over it than this we are allocating a lot uh, so the dc uh, helps us with uh, not having to do the memory management uh, file programming and ocaml is going to uh, have multi core and effect handlers very soon uh, we are uh, really looking forward to uh, the release of ocaml 5 which uh, will bring in multi core with the same one of the most uh, anticipated features in ocaml uh, the work is done and uh, we can expect the release uh, sometime possibly in the next quarter uh, maybe during the end of june or so i uh, don't take my word for it but uh, that is uh, the current uh, timeline and uh, i currently lead a team uh, that is helping the community move with token side and uh, we hope to have more people start looking at token one the release of camel side and uh, this uh, talk aims at making the developer experience more uh, pleasant to people when they start using ocaml and as well as uh, for people who have been using ocaml for a while now and uh, they would like to try out the uh, new features that have been uh, added to the ocaml platform so to get ocaml it's uh, quite straightforward all we need is the opam package manager and to install opam package manager uh, you only need this one line uh, this one line this bash uh, script is going to install opam for you uh, on linux and mac so the feature is slightly different in windows but uh, if you are interested in using opamel on windows i would recommend uh, using wsl it is also possible to use it natively on windows uh, but the procedure is slightly different and uh, due to the time constraints uh, i am not able to cover the windows part but uh, i would uh, definitely encourage you to uh, look at uh, the native windows support if you are interested in using ocaml on windows uh, so coming back to ocam uh, this one line is going to install the right version of ocam for us on whatever system we are using on linux or mac and uh, right after we install this uh, we just have to run opa minute which is uh, going to initialize the configuration for us uh, so after you init uh, the opa it's going to install the default switch default switch is usually the latest release compiler which is uh, 413 right now but opa also allows us to actually install more than one compiler version at the same time which uh, makes it easier to test different versions of packages so uh, for example some packages should support only certain versions of the compiler and uh, will not support newer versions or older versions so uh, when you have multiple compilers at the same time it makes it easier for us to actually uh, use it on different test cases so just to show uh, how it works i can show the different features that i have right now these are all the features i have right now i have so many i know but uh, uh, usually we don't need these many features uh, i had been hacking on the compiler because i i have this many features uh, so it's uh, yeah it's just this, uh, running this one line that's the first thing to set the program and uh, we are on to a start uh before i go further i would like to give you all a big picture of what the different components of the ocaml platform are uh i mean don't worry if a lot of it is not making sense right now hopefully we'll uh, connect the dots as we go along uh so Uh, to talk about the different stages of the ocaml platform as you can see there are uh, many different components that uh, work together and the community has been working very hard on uh, all all of these uh, packages the first stage is incubating uh, 
some of the packages. So these are the quite new packages. Sorry, uh, these are quite uh, new packages, but uh, they are very useful. So uh, uh, folks are working very hard on uh, developing them uh, and uh, making them stable. So the first two items in the incubate stage are the ODOC and MDX. So these both, both of these are the documentation tools. ODOC uh, allows us to write documentation within the code, code uh, files itself, uh, so that you don't have to write documentation separately. Uh, MDX uh, allows us to write code uh, within markdown files and uh, also execute uh, we'll be seeing them in detail later. I'm just giving a quick introduction of all this right now. Uh, LFP server is the language server protocol. Uh, this can be used with uh, your favorite text editor to make it work like an IDE. Uh, there are many interesting features in the LFP server. I'll be showing some of them in the subsequent slides. So, OCaml format uh, uh, automatically formats our uh, OCaml code as it, with, to comply to the accepted standard. Uh, it's uh, very useful, especially when there are multiple people working on the same code base to maintain uniformity in the code base. Zoom release allows us to uh, release libraries. Uh, it's, uh, it's supposed to work with uh, Zoom, with the package manager and uh, GitHub uh, libraries that are hosted on GitHub. OPAM uh, is uh, the package manager that we talked about earlier. Uh, Doom is the build system uh, that's uh, widely used uh, by OPAM developers. Uh, PTF is this uh, useful set of uh, libraries to write uh, PTF extensions uh, for your OPAM performance. UTOP uh, is uh, a REPL, which is uh, which has more features than the uh, REPL that ships to the compiler. Uh, OPAM Publish uh, allows us to publish uh, new versions of the libraries on OPAM repository. So OPAM repository is the central source of uh, all the OPAM packages, uh, and that's where we install uh, the released OPAM packages from. Merlin is uh, uh, supposed to work with the LFP server on uh, providing uh, nice tidy like features like autocomplete uh, types, uh, displaying types on the files and uh, so on. We'll be seeing it uh, in the next part of the presentation. Uh, sustain, uh, the tools uh, that fall under sustain uh, have been in the community for a while. And uh, I would say they are legacy tools. Uh, there are uh, no uh, actively, they're not actively developed anymore and there are no new features being added to the tools under the thing. But uh, we do have many packages uh, and libraries that use these uh, tools. So uh, they are in the sustain mode for a while until they're deprecated. So they would still work with the current features, but uh, they wouldn't add uh, any new features with. So OCP indent is uh, an indentation tool. And uh, uh, now that we have OCaml format, uh, we don't need a separate tool for the indentation. So uh, it's in the same mode. OCaml build and uh, OCaml find are, uh, they predate Dune. So Dune has uh, essentially overrides the uh, OCaml build and OCaml find. So, but uh, projects that use OCaml build and OCaml signed uh, would still work, but uh, they are encouraged to switch to Doom to uh, make it uh, use more latest features of Doom. Uh, these libraries uh, that fall under deprecate are uh, deprecated and uh, they are in the path of being removed from the existing projects that use them. So, OAS is uh, OASIS and CAMEL is the four are the libraries that fall into deprecate. OASIS is a build manager, and uh, it's uh, again, it's a uh, dune override OASIS. So it's uh, not uh, needed anymore. 
all right uh, so now that uh, we have a very quick so uh, we had a very quick overview of what the different components of the optimal platform are uh, i'll uh, move on to giving you all a very quick uh, demo on how these different things work we will not cover all of this but uh, we will be covering the most useful parts uh, the use in the day to day uh, work of that no camel developer all right the first thing is the repl so uh, ocaml top level is the repl that uh, ships with uh, the ocaml compiler so when you uh, just run ocaml on your terminal it's uh, going to start the repl for you it also mentions the current version that you are on if you see that you are on the wrong version all you have to do is you have to switch to the right uh, compiler version that you want to select uh, and uh, you have to evaluate the opam environment uh, to make sure that you are using the right opam version that's uh, going to give us the repl and uh, all the instructions in the repl are uh, entered with two semicolons to say that i'm done with uh, what i want to run uh, this is a nice way to play around with especially when you are uh, starting uh, to learn opam and also when you are uh, developing something new it uh, makes it uh, playing with uh, what you are writing will be so this is the ocaml top level that ships to the compiler we also have utop uh, like i mentioned earlier the utop is built on top of the ocaml compiler top level but uh, it has more added features that makes it easier for us to use the repl Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Utop supports code completion with uh, tab B. So if you see the uh, code that's running right now, it's uh, using the auto complete on the list in it. Uh, all that is going there. It also displays uh, the type of the function. If, if you are not sure what the type of some function, just run it on Utop, and Utop is going to display the type of the function for you. Uh, which makes uh, using uh, the API is quite easy. Uh, and uh, it also has uh, syntax highlighting and uh, navigating is also quite uh, nice on the top when you compare it with the uh, OCaml top level. So it's uh, recommended uh, for people to use the top if they want to use the repl. If, for example, uh, if I want to execute the previous lock, uh, we just pick up like we do on terminals. Unfortunately, that doesn't work on the uh, OCaml top level. But the uh, Utop has that uh, workaround, and uh, it's quite nice. I would uh, highly recommend playing with Utop if you're using OCaml for the first time. Yeah, and uh, Dune is the build manager. So Dune was initially developed at uh, Game Street internally, and uh, later they had uh, released it. Uh, they had made it open source, and uh, now Dune is uh, the default build manager that's used uh, in new OCaml projects. Uh, Dune makes uh, working with uh, OCaml projects quite nice. So you can initialize the project, uh, new project with Dune, and and uh, initializing a project as you can see in the terminal uh, initializing has uh, two modes project mode and the library mode so uh, once you initialize it with the project mode uh, that wouldn't have any executable when you initialize it with the uh, library mode the, it will create your uh, test and uh, all the other uh, uh, library the basic ones for you so that uh, gives you the skeleton of how your project is going to look like and we can go from there uh you yeah of course you build uh, all the library and the executables you can also uh, allows us to run test to be doing run test command and uh, we can also execute the executable to do next it so this is a complete package in how you can build the camel project 
uh, Dune also has uh, more features. So Dune is uh, uh, in its conception composite. Uh, what do we mean by composite here? So let's say we have n different projects uh, and we use Dune. Uh, it's uh, quite simple to combine all of them. Uh, let's say we put all of them into one directory and uh, have a top level Dune project. Right? Then Dune will uh, certainly be able to recognize all of the projects and uh, compile and run all of them. So that uh, now becomes as a single Dune project. So uh, combining and splitting libraries is quite simple with uh, Dune if all of them are uh, all of them use Dune. Dune also supports uh, cross compilation. So uh, Dune supports having separate targets for uh, Linux. Mac and Windows. Usually, uh, it's uh, not mandatory to specify them unless you are using some your OS specific features that are present in the project. So, uh, Dune also supports OPAM. Uh, of course, it supports OPAM and uh, it makes the workflow of uh, merging with OPAM quite easy. Dune supports SSIs also, especially uh, the CSSI is quite widely used in the OCaml community. Uh, there are the, having C bindings makes it easier to communicate with other projects and uh, low level, some of the low level stuff. So Dune has provisions for the specifying uh, SSI within the Dune file itself. Uh, there's no need to compile them separately. Uh, Dune supports PTX as well. Uh, PTX extensions uh, are quite useful for uh, many of your young projects. And the uh, uh, Dune does have provisions to specify what PDFs we are using in the project. And Dune also supports JavaScript, uh, which is JS of OCaml. JS of OCaml is uh, used uh, to write uh, web applications with OCaml. So yeah, Dune as a tool is quite uh, versatile. Uh, so that is about uh, Doom. Uh, now going on to the IDE experience. So there's usually this uh, notion of OCaml uh, doesn't have an IDE. So uh, OCaml LST server comes quite close to it. Uh, it's possible to transform your favorite text editor to an IDE. So the ID can be made with uh, Emacs, Vim, and VS Code that I know of. Uh, I would personally be using uh, VS Code uh, because that's what uh, I use in my day-to-day -day work. So, but uh, it's possible with uh, Emacs and Vim as well. So for Emacs, uh, you need uh, the LSE mode of Emacs and OCaml LSE server. For Vim, you, you would need uh, Vim LSP and OCaml LSP server. And for VS Code, uh, we would need the VS Code OCaml. So this uh, button that you see here is going to let us generate the MLI file uh, from the ML file. And uh, we don't have to do it uh, manually, which is very nice. MLI files are usually uh, used uh, to write document, API documentation. So all we need to do is just write the documentation and not uh, go over this part again, which is uh, quite useful in my experience. So, uh, yeah, so the next one is uh, hovering uh, for types. So uh, when you see this program and uh, when, when you uh, just hover over some function or some part of a function or uh, some variable, it's uh, going to uh, show us the type uh, and uh, which is very useful, especially in largest functions to look at parts and see what the sub part of the function is returning for us. And uh, this has also been uh, very useful as and when you write uh, new OCaml programs or uh, even when you are uh, looking at uh, old code bases. So this is another part of the IDE experience. Uh, the other part is yeah autocomplete. So Merlin uh, has this uh, nice autocomplete feature. Uh, 
uh, you can see uh, in this code snippet uh, the auto complete features being displayed uh, it's uh, uh, it's quite nice it's going to show us uh, the modules and uh, the functions of the modules and it also displays the types of the functions for us so uh, it makes uh, writing uh, new functions uh, quite intuitive because you see the type uh, uh, here itself instead of uh, us having to look at the api docs going back and forth between the api docs and uh, between the uh, source files uh, so this is the other part of the IDE experience. Uh, so the next part is uh, formatting code. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, this OCaml format uh, uh, makes the formatting uniform with uh, an agreed upon standard. So as you see here, uh, this is the old uh, formatting that I had used while writing the code uh, without having any um, standards in mind, uh, coding standards in mind. Uh, and once you uh, run it with OCaml format, it's going to give us this uh, nice uh, reordering of uh, the code. This is uh, quite uh, nice to look at. And uh, it also makes uh, the entire code base uniform for us. So let's say uh, we have multiple people working on a single package or a single code base. Using OCaml format is going to make all of it uniform. So it's uh, quite useful for uh, both large projects and for small projects. So all we need to do for running OCaml format is it's uh, supported by Dune. So Dune build, just Dune build is going to build uh, the project for us. Uh, Dune build at uh, FMT is going to invoke OCaml format. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the formatted file is going to be present uh, in the uh, Dune's build folder. If you want to uh, use that in your code, we need to run this dune promote, uh, which is going to copy the formatted code uh, from the dunes folder to our uh, original source file. So it's uh, quite simple. Uh, and uh, I would recommend uh, running this OCaml format uh, every time we write something new so that uh, it just stays uh, the entire uh, code base stays uniform in the styling. Yes, and uh, okay, coming to the part about uh, documentation, uh, we have two tools uh, that are quite uh, actively being developed uh, right now. So the first one is MDX. MDX, uh, yeah, as you can see from the name, it supports Markdown. Uh, and it also supports uh, OCaml's uh, OCaml, uh, uh, documentation tool, ODOX uh, documentation format. So this MDX uh, is, uh, MDX allows us to uh, write code within Martown file. So let's say we have a readme file, uh, which uh, is going to demonstrate some features and we have some code there. MDX, is, uh, MDX allows us to actually run the code that's present in the markdown files. So uh, this uh, actually helps us in keeping the documentation up to date. Uh, so we don't have any stale parts in the documentation. It's uh, very annoying when you have documentation uh, and uh, have code snippets in the documentation, but uh, when you actually try to run them, they don't work. Uh, so MDX uh, helps us in eliminating that. So MDX was born out of this, uh, uh, while writing this book, uh, Real World OCaml. Uh, I would uh, highly recommend reading that book uh, if you want to learn OCaml. So MDX was uh, written uh, and uh, the uh, during writing the book Real World OCaml and uh, it was uh, uh, very useful for uh, writing book. And uh, it's also being used in uh, many other projects right now. So these are just the config uh, uh, things that we need to specify in these files. And Dune run test uh, would by default uh, run all the markdown files for any code snippets. And uh, the next one is ODOC. 
So ODOP is the documentation tool and uh, it generates uh, HTML pages and uh, man pages and LaTeX documents from the documentation that's embedded in the source itself. Uh, so when we have comments of this form, uh, so OCaml comments are usually, uh, they don't need uh, two asterisk here, just one asterisk is sufficient for uh, the comment. But uh, for ODOP comments, we need the specific uh, format for it to be passed as uh, documentation comment. So it uh, just uh, takes out whatever uh, co comments that are present in the source files and uh, it displays it as uh, a HTML file. So this is a uh, ODOC uh, generated documentation of one of the modules. Uh, so it is uh, quite uh, nice to uh, actually have the documentation embedded in the code base itself rather than having to write documentation separately. So ODOC has this separate uh, format called MLD, which uh, we can use for writing uh, long form documentation. So this is just the API docs that you see here. But, uh, MLD files allow us to write uh, tutorials and uh, some other long form documentations of that sort. Uh, and they are also clubbed together with the API docs. So you have all the documentation together at uh, one place and uh, you don't have to redirect people to different places for uh, looking at the documentation. ODOC is uh, being actively developed and uh, new features are being added. So I'm uh, quite excited to see uh, how that evolves. So Dune release, uh, is a tool to actually just tag uh, the release of your new libraries or uh, new versions of your existing libraries. So all we need to do is uh, create a tag, do a release tag is going to parse the tag from the changes file for us. And do and release would uh, create the release, uh, which can uh, then be uploaded to GitHub. Uh, yes. and. Uh, the released uh, packages uh, should be published in the OPAM repository. So OPAM repository is the uh, single source of truth for OCaml packages. So all the released OCaml packages are present in the OPAM repository. So it's the central source of uh, all OCaml libraries. So this is the default uh, uh, OPAM repository. And uh, any and every release is going to go there. OPAM repository also, OPAM also allows us to have custom OPAM repositories. So if you don't want uh, your library to be released in the OPAM repository uh, and you just want to test it out, we can create our own OPAM repository, which is going to host the packages for us and uh, set that as one of the sources in OPAM. And uh, we can then install packages from the custom repository. So it will not be exposed to uh, people who don't have access to the custom repository. Uh, so to release uh, libraries to OPAM repository, uh, we have this tool called uh, OPAM Publish, uh, which uh, publishes packages for us. So after all the uh, tagging and uh, release on GitHub is done, all we need to do is uh, call this OPAM Publish within the package directory and it will take us through some uh, items uh, like it will ask you to enter your uh, github token and uh, it's it will show us the patch uh, right before it's submitted to opam publish so this is uh, one of the sample pr that was generated with opam publish you can see that being mentioned here and uh, to release the library uh, we need to add the dot opam file that's present in the library to uh, the uh, PR and uh, it's going to uh, create a patch for us. And once that patch gets merged, uh, the library is released. So it's uh, quite simple to create a new uh, package, new versions of packages and uh, even release new libraries. Yes, so before uh, I finish, um, uh, we are uh, hiring for many positions at Taradis. So if uh, you are interested in working with OCaml or uh, just want to check out what it is, uh, feel free to ping me. Yeah, and uh, that is all uh, about the presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions 
if there are any. Thanks to the, uh, you really maintain your calm during the technical uh, <laughs> over there. So really appreciate uh, your composer in that one. I'm sorry about uh, the glitch. <laughs> No worries at all. Uh, we handle it like pro live demos and recovering this live is it's great. Uh, so <laughs> glad we were able to do that. So uh, there is one question that uh, let's get to first. Uh, okay. Uh, so Rick is asking, what is the difference between Dune release and OPAM publish? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so Dune release is uh, just going to tag the package for us and uh, put it on GitHub under the tagged uh, version releases. OPAM publish uh, actually uh, adds it to the OPAM repository and uh, that is when people will be able to install the package. So uh, OPAM repository, uh, so the first stage is tune release and the next stage is OPAM publish, if it uh, makes sense. Got it. Uh, Rick, I hope that uh, makes sense. 